Hello guys, welcome to the Train Parrot. BlackRock ETF is huge for Bitcoin and all of crypto, but like if that wasn't enough, there are rumors that now Fidelity is also filing for a BTC ETF. Fidelity is managing 4.5 trillion. It's a big deal. Some people are starting to speculate that there must be something that changed in the SEC. BlackRock has only lost one application for an ETF in the whole history, among hundreds of them that were successful. And maybe because of that, we are starting to hear rumors of the chairman Gary Gensler soon being replaced by the SEC. It all starting to make sense together. In today's video, we're going to look at different patterns on the daily, on the shorter time frame, including the general markets, supporting resistance for Bitcoin, this massive signal from the RSI, which is showing a change in momentum on the weekly, open interest, longs, shorts, market overview, servers, massive deposit of stable coins in the exchanges. Do not miss that information. Is this still a healthy move? I was worried that the Bitcoin network health We'll cover Bitcoin dominance, CME gaps, liquidity as usual, and all the patterns that we are monitoring constantly to make sure that we are not missing any medium, long-term, short-term moves. We're gonna cover material charts as well, high block capital, we'll cover the delta, everything in this video. Find a place comf I'll try to keep it very short. I'll guarantee you that you're going to come out very well informed. So hit the like, subscribe to the channel, watch the full video and write down a comment below. That's the best way that you can also help. That is one of the best ways that you can help the channel to keep growing. Since our video on Saturday, we came back inside this pattern and now we are breaking out above the blue line on the daily. We're definitely going to find some resistance at 27.2 because there's an order block there and at 28.3. On the lower time frame 15 minutes we are on this triangle at the moment we should not break below this red line right here our point of control is located at 26.5 so there's still a chance that we can break below this find support in the point of control for a continuation to the upside dollar index started the week a little bit bullish but now is finding resistance precisely in our level of 102.5 hopefully it won't be able to cross above it and continue the trend towards the 101 level. Traditional markets are looking healthy, although they are calling for a pullback since they have been having a very long run to the upside without any correction. We're seeing the one hour on Bitcoin. We are reaching the resistance on the daily. We're getting some signals on breaking point to buy, but I wouldn't necessarily be very aggressive with my profit taking because we are right in front of resistance. As I mentioned, 27.2 is an order block on the daily, so be careful. But since our last video, we managed to break this trend line. We were speculating that we can make a move to the top of this channel, which is precisely what we are doing right now. And on the weekly, I'm very excited because we finally broke above this trend line, which is another confirmation that we may have a continuation in the uptrend on the weekly. Very exciting times. In terms of the open interest, all this area around here was dominated by the longs. After they got liquidated or they decided to close their positions, the shorts started taking over and the open interest growing. And as this is happening, they are now the ones being punished with the price finally making a move to the upside. The market on the month hasn't recovered, although people are already very excited with some of the movers on the weekly and the daily. Some of those winners today, we have Stacks, Optimism, Injective, Solana, and of course, Bitcoin now is making it to position number 11. Finally, Bitcoin is catching up with the general markets, going to the upside. This is a potential breakout. Everybody admits it. Cerberus, now for second consecutive week, we are in the area of reset. That means that the flow has finally go massively into stable coins, which indicates that we need to keep our eyes very open because opportunities are going to emerge anytime. But keep watching because I'm not saying go mental and buy all the olds. There will be a time for that, but I'm going to explain in the rest of the video what could be a more conservative entry than just taking this signal and going all in. If you look in the past, sometimes you see a reset into stable coins, but it remains in the warning zone for quite a while, while there's still some capitulation. In this case, we are in a Bitcoin season, so let's have a look at what that implies for this signal. In total three, we are below the super trend, optimized and the normal super trend on the four hour, 
We are struggling to make a move to turn into green, which is showing a lot of weakness on the altcoin market. And most of that is coming from the fact that the Bitcoin dominance has finally made a move above 50%. That is massive. People are depositing stable coins like crazy in the past three, four days. You can never tell what they're going to do with the stable coins, but since the Bitcoin dominance is above 50%, that is attracting a lot of people to catch Bitcoin before it makes a massive move. I'll cover later in material indicators what sort of investors are right now mostly buying Bitcoin and which ones aren't yet. We're at Bitcoin season at level 22. It's Bitcoin season up until 25. And these are the tokens that are outperforming Bitcoin in the past 90 days. Fear and Greed Index is neutral Ethereum BTC pair is still bleeding against Bitcoin. So that means that currently Bitcoin is still a better investment than Ethereum. And for as long as Bitcoin remains at the high level of dominance, Ethereum is going to find it really hard to outperform Bitcoin, just like the majority of the old coins, with a few exceptions, of course. If you look at the past trend lines like this in a logarithmic chart weekly, it's a very good indication on when to start thinking Ethereum and when not. If you are below the trend line bitcoin is outperforming ethereum and if you are above the trend line you have a breakout and it's safer to start holding ethereum again then bitcoin network had me a bit worried during this whole move to the downside and the reason for that is because we broke out here but then we came back inside the trend line so in this candle at 25.7 things were not looking great for the health of the bitcoin net network particularly the network value transaction but as you can see here now it's showing that it is back every time you get a breakout like this you get moves of 40 50 percent to the upside this is another confirmation that the move is healthy the only exception is is the active address sentiment oscillator. The more addresses that are active, the more healthy the network is. And we are still below this channel with the yellow lines, but the channel is starting to point to the upside. I want to see it coming back into this channel. And the number of unique addresses that appear for the first time in a transaction of the native coin in the network had me really worried when we broke the trend line and the MA monthly. But right now we regain our position above both of them, which has happened in the past as well during a bull run. But in principle, what we want to do is we want to stay above the EMA and any trend line to maintain sustained move to the upside on Bitcoin. So in terms of health of the network, two out of three are very healthy. The active addresses oscillator is not that bad. I think it's on the way to recover as well. And I'm going to borrow from Benjamin Cohen's channel, Cryptoverse. This pattern, I really like it. It's a trend line form from the top of the Bitcoin dominance in 2017, connected with 2021, which is pointing at around 54% of dominance in Bitcoin. The next level of resistance is 57. So he's speculating that the Bitcoin dominance should get so were around the 60%. During that whole move, all coins are going to continue to bleed. Even Ethereum is going to struggle to make a move. But as soon as Bitcoin finds a local top, then the flow of the monet is going to start circulating towards those other assets. CME gaps, we still have this one at 27.9. It's definitely doable. And this last weekend, we didn't form any new CME gap. I was very nervous to see the price action to be again below the 200 weekly MA, but it seems like this week we are finally making it above it. If you look at the past, Bitcoin has never spent much time below it with the exception here of 2015 and a massive week on COVID, but almost every bear market, the red line has been our level of support. In this last bear market, we made it even below the 300 weekly MA. So I'm really excited to see the price again back above it. But since the price hasn't really been paying much respect to it, I wouldn't be surprised to go back below it anytime soon. The EMA ribbon is looking very healthy. I really like this shape here with the hanging man and then followed by another green candle. It seems like there is a big chance that we are going to meet again with the big boss of the bull market. Again, as I keep saying, it took a long time to break to the downside. So I wouldn't expect to just come back for the second round and just break it like butter. And I got big news for you because the Gaussian channel that we've been watching in the previous videos 
finally on the sixth day now is turned into green which is big news because it means that we are only one time frame away to flipping into green on the weekly many youtube channels are looking into the gaussian channel on the weekly and hoping to flip into green because every time you flip in green you get a massive bull run guys i'm still hosting this exclusive event to unlock up to 60,000 in rewards in order to unlock the rewards make sure that you go to okx open a new account and sign up and when you are in this page expand the referral and write down parrot once you do that you're going to see 20 percent that's going to confirm that your new account is going to have the cheapest fees that you can get and you're also going to be supporting our channel once you have your new account on okx then head down to the description of this video where i say exclusive event okx and click join you have 10 days to do it and you can claim massive rewards obviously that's depending on how much you deposit but you can deposit a minimum of 50 dollars and as long as you're trading that then you're eligible to get those rewards in terms of cpr we're getting closer and closer to the June pivots and confronting this downward sloping resistance. In order to stay bullish on CPR monthly, we need to conquer this, turn it into support, and we need to pay a visit to the first level of resistance of June. If we manage to do that, we are securing ourselves a bullish July and August. On Saturday, I was calling for a pullback by watching the one hour RSI. My call was around here at this top, we didn't make a massive move slightly above 1% to the downside. We could say that this was more sideways rather than an actual pullback. It helps the way also for many shorts to start opening positions right here just to get liquidated to the upside as usual. And on the 4 hour RSI, I was calling for a confirmation against this trend line and then some upside. We can see that we came down to 53, not precisely to the trend line itself that was a 45, and then we make a higher move to 67. So not very accurate, but at least I got the direction right. In terms of fair value gaps, we are seeing here a 26.1, some volume and a 27. If we go to the top, the liquidity is at 32.6 on material indicators fire charts make sure you have a look in the description i have a massive discount for material charts and they are incredibly useful charts to see where are the orders in the exchange at all times there's a huge order at 30k for selling and we can also see that in the weekly the people respond responsible for this move to the upside has been pretty much orders from 100k to 1 million and 1 million to 10 million most of the retail are selling while at the same time the larger wells are buying at these prices very interesting development let's have a look at high block capital we can see that 24 Two is still packed with liquidity on the three months and to the top we have liquidity at 30.2 and at 31k and on the one month we can see 28.1 as the largest level of liquidation to the upside in terms of the delta it's well in the green we have almost 13 billion of delta to the upside that means that the longs are the ones that are more exposed to get liquidated right now take the opposite side of this more and more bitcoin is becoming illiquid james is saying 150k in the past 30 days similar levels after luna collapse i connect this with the price move of bitcoin the bitcoin dominance and also all the fears coming from binance and all the other exchanges that have been attacked by the sec people already learned their lesson and they are starting to do the right thing to do which is to remove your bitcoin from the exchanges and hold it in a wallet and by the way if you're going to hold bitcoin do not use a hardware wallet that uses a firmware like for example this one is ledger every time you're upgrading your firmware on something like this the company via internet they inject firmware which is what drives the software on this piece of hardware if one day they decide to put a backdoor on it to know your private keys they can totally do it so it's up to a centralized entity to decide whether your keys are private or not whereas i'm using this one here that is called tangent is a card and it works beautiful with my phone all i need to do is tap it with nfc the private key is in the card i have multiple copies and in my opinion right now is the safest way to go with DeFi. the app is beautiful they have amazing reviews everywhere i read everything i could find about tangent hardware wallet and i couldn't find a single downside make sure that you use the link in the description and you're gonna get a discount as well when you order it i got mine delivered for free in only a few days and i'm completely ditching 
all my hardware wallets that use firmware because I don't want to be thinking when or how those companies are going to decide to give my private keys and my identity to governments and, and all this stuff. So it's your call, but definitely recommend it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you have liked the video, subscribe to the channel, write a comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.